For more videos visit forthesakeofeducation.com Alright guys, now we're gonna do this rather long problem but if you pay attention it can become a very easy problem. So basically we have three points, point A right here, point B down here and point C down here. So what we have to do is uh, express each of the forces in Cartesian vector form which are these two forces F1 and F2 determine the magnitude and coordinate direction angles of the resultant force so this is how we're gonna do it we're gonna find the position vectors for point A, point B and point C then we're gonna find the position vectors for from A to C and from A to B by subtracting the A minus C finding A, A to C um, components and finding A to B by subtracting the V minus A. When we have those uh, direction angles we are gonna multiply the cosine of them by each of the forces and we're gonna get the Cartesian vector form of the two forces and then we're gonna add them together and get the resultant force. So just follow me for a second find the position vectors first position vectors of A B and C so A is equal to 0 I plus 4 J plus 0 K easy to find is this vector right here it has no x component, it has no c component, it's just positive 4. Position vector v, again easily found. 2i plus 0j minus 6k. So it's going positive 2 in the x and it's going 0 on the y, nothing on the y, and it's going straight down on the c, which means negative 6. Now C, a bit tricky but not really, it has a X component, a Y component and a C component. We gotta write this one down so we don't get confused. So 2.5 right here for the X in the negative direction, so it's negative 2.5. Now to find the C, the Y is actually 0, you see that it's not doing nothing in the Y. To find the C component, all you got to do is multiply 2.5 by 12 and divide it by 5. It's some sort of ratio. So you get that is equal to 6. And it's going in the positive C direction. So this is negative 2.5i plus C or J plus 6k. Now we have the three uh, uh, position vectors for the three points that we're going to be working with. So now let's do A to B first. So basically we are trying to find the position vector from here all the way to here. And to find that position vector, A to B vector, let's call it, it's going to be equal to the B components, Bx minus Ax, I plus BY minus AY J plus B in the C minus A in the C K. So when you plug the numbers in, you're going to get that this is 2 minus 0 I plus 0 minus 4 J plus negative 6 minus 0 k this is 2 i minus 4 j minus 6 k now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the magnitude of this vector I'm gonna start working here because I know I'm gonna run out of space on a b to find the magnitude all you do is square the components and add them together and 
you're going to get that the magnitude is equal to 7.48. Now we're going to get the direction angles of this vector right here. Not this force, this vector. The direction angles are equal to the cosine inverse of the x over the magnitude, cosine inverse of the y over the magnitude, and cosine inverse of the c over the magnitude. And the direction angles come out to be 74 point five one twenty two point three and one forty three point three and if the direction angles for this line are these these are all also the direction angles for f of two so this is a and b direction angles which are also f of two direction angles Since we have the direction angles, we can find the Cartesian vector form of f of 2 very easily. f of 2. So f of 2 has an x component, a y component, and a c component. And can be found by multiplying f of 2 times the cosine of its direction angles. f of 2 times the cosine of beta and f of 2 times the cosine of okay we got it and this f of 2 comes out to be 13.36 negative 26.71 and negative 40.1 and this will be the vector 13.36 i minus 26.71 j minus 40.1 k Cartesian vector form of f of 2 now we're going to do the same thing from a to c exact same thing we're doing here let me put a line so we don't make so much mess so we're going to find vector a to c by doing uh, c of x minus a of x i plus c of y minus a of y j plus c of z minus a of c k and what you're going to get when you plug the numbers in is that this vector is equal to negative 2.5 i minus 4 j plus 6k. Then we're going to find the magnitude of this vector. This vector, remember, is from here all the way to here. And the magnitude can be found by using the same formula we use for the magnitude of a of v, of course, which is going to be equal to 7.63. With this magnitude and these formulas, of the cosine numbers of each of the components which are these three divided by the magnitude is going to give you the direction angles of a of c and the direction angles of a of c are going to be the same direction angles of f of one since they are aiming in the same direction and again it can be found by doing the cosine numbers of the x over a c times the y over the magnitude of c times the c uh, divided by the magnitude which is 7.63 so the first angle comes out to be 109.1 degrees the second angle 121.6 degrees and the last angle is 38.2 degrees these are the same direction angles for f of 1 so multiplying them by the cosine the cosine of each of these angles by the magnitude of the force which is 80 it's going to give you f of x, f of y, and f of c. So f of 1 has an x component, a y component, and a c component. And they can be found by multiplying it by the angles, like we did before with f of 2. 
and the magnitudes are negative 26.2, negative 41.9, and 62.9. So I'm out of space and I, okay, hold on, let me write it right here. I have a lot of space up here. F of 1 comes out to be negative 26.2i minus 41.9j plus 62.9k. So the resultant force is equal to f of 1 plus f of 2, which comes out to be basically add this 3 to this 3 right here. Let me put it in a square since it's important. And you're going to get that the resultant force is equal to negative 12.84i minus 68.61j plus 22.8k. We have the Cartesian vector form of the resultant force. You need to find the magnitude of this resultant force because they want the coordinate direction angles of the resultant force. They are being annoying. So to find the magnitude, basically same formula as here, x squared plus y squared plus c squared is going to give you the magnitude. So this square plus this square plus this square, all square rooted. And you're going to get that the resultant force is 73.4. That resultant force you're going to use to find the coordinate direction angles just like we did here. The cosine inverse of the x component over the magnitude gives you the first angle, the y component over the magnitude gives you the other angle, and the c component over the magnitude gives you the last angle. So the angles are going to come out to be the angles over the resultant force are going to come out to be 100.1 degrees 159.2 degrees and 71.9 degrees so these are the direction angles this is the magnitude this is direction angles magnitude this is the Cartesian vector form Cartesian vector form of F1 Cartesian vector form of F2 direction angles of AV and F2 and direction angles of AC and F1. Right? No, sorry. They're right here. F1. Okay. Uh, final answer. Again, remember the direction angles of a force and a line along the same way, aiming at the same direction, are the same. The direction angles, all they do is tell you the direction, have nothing to do with magnitude. So we use that rule to calculate all this. Please comment below if you want me to do any problems and I'll be happy to help. Thank you.